hit record. There we go. Welcome, everybody, to uh, Dennis Bowen's uh, showcase. Yeah, that sounds pretty right, right? Yeah, Dennis Bowen's showcase. Yeah, I like that. So, um, yeah, that's the name of the, that's the name I'm going with, Dennis Bowen Showcase. So, uh, for those of you who don't know, um, I'm a stage actor. I have formed in many plays, and that's the reason why I called this showcase is that the majority of the stuff I was in are the shorter, thirty-minute uh, plays that happen every week uh, at UNCP when I was there. I don't know if they're still doing it anymore because of the pandemic, um, but I want to kind of talk about and just archive a lot of those memories. There are going to be times where I might have to get into uh, a touchier memory. Mem there are going to be times where I have to go into touchier memories where I might have to give a you know warning that. Uh, what I'm talking about will be kind of sad, you know, but it, not today. Don't worry, not today. Today is not going to be focusing on those because I've never revealed to a wide audience what I've done before I went to college because what I've always kind of said was, yeah, I really didn't act before college because I didn't really have a chance to, but that's not 100% true. Uh, there are some things I do want to kind of talk about today to give kind of like, because this is going to be a rough pilot episode. Um, and the next one we'll be talking about, then I'll talk about some of the shows I've done. Or I might talk about my acting one monologue the next time. Because I consider that one one of my first. Uh, I kind of like that monologue. Um, <laughs> and maybe even do, because I do have footage of that too. So I might even react to that. Uh, but, uh, that, those two are definitely going to be the cringiest episodes to review, so, uh, this one as well, so, um, because I just, ugh. I mean, it's not, it's embarrassing, but it's not, like, you know, career-ending embarrassing, or maybe it is, I don't know. So, um, but I also want to kind of always give sort of tips and advice from my point of view, uh, results will vary, um, so, I get asked all the time, how do you act? How did you get involved in acting? Or why do you do it? Or uh, people will ask, hey, how can I be an actor? You make it look so easy. Well, it's not easy. In fact, it's difficult as fucking hell. But, uh, first things first, you're going to have to, uh, whew, man, that's a loaded question, ain't it? Well, just do it, you know, uh, but you do need training. I do think a lot of people, it's hard for a lot of people to get into it with no training and uh, just going to auditions. Don't do that. Uh, what you're going to need to do is uh, get some, and there are communities where there are basic training courses that train you how to uh, enunciate your words properly because, uh you know, it's hard to understand you. Sometimes it's hard to understand me, and I've always had that kind of problem. So, you know, I recommend getting some basic training. I recommend... You don't have to go to college. You don't even have to go to, I don't know, community college for it. You really don't. Uh, some people are naturally gifted. Some people just naturally like being in front of a camera. Some people naturally like performing in front of uh, an audience. And if that's you... You know, go ahead, go for it. If you're thinking about becoming famous just because you're an actor, you're not going to make it in this business. Um, and I'm sorry to tell you that. Now, if you're going into college now, or, well, whenever this pandemic's over with, if you want to uh, become an actor, but you're afraid that you're not, you don't, ha you don't have any experience before college, and you feel like you wouldn't be able to do good in college, Take that thought and throw it in, right in the garbage. Okay? Because if you do have an interest in the arts, 
You're doing nobody but yourself a disservice by not at least attempting. You don't have to. You could sign up for Acting One. I believe in most programs, in most, um, oh God, what's the word I'm looking for? I believe it's an extracurricular or, God, I just graduated college and I can't even remember the word for it. Uh, but it's outside your major's classes, but it's a requirement. You get one art class, take it. Hey, you might, you might like it. And there's nothing wrong with doing it as a hobby. You can act for a hobby, folks. There are plenty of local theaters that don't really pay, but, like, it's mostly a hobby. As I just knocked something over, it's my hat. Uh, I have hats right next to my door. I apologize on that. But you don't have to, uh... What I'm saying is, don't think... Don't limit yourself. And that's another point I want to make. Don't limit yourself to just acting or just costume designing or just stage designing or prop hands or any of that because uh, it definitely helps you out uh, build connections. Build connections is the most really important in acting. Uh, that's how I've gotten the majority of my roles is because I knew people that needed a, uh, needed a person to be able to play a character and sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't. Uh, and we'll talk about those in future episodes. But, uh, yeah. So, I just want to make sure people know that the limited experience is fine. Uh, and if you were in high school and you were the lead role in Romeo and Juliet and you think you're top shit, uh, by the way, problem right here, guess what? That doesn't matter. No. What you did in high school does not go on your resume. What you did in middle school definitely should not go on your resume. You are working with a bunch of people who really probably didn't give a damn about the arts. They were just there because extra credit. I know my high school, we had a very small drama club. So we never got to perform plays anyway. I was not in my drama club, as a matter of fact. Uh, it was most of them were musical theater people, and they preferred musical theater and I was not, I'm not a musician. <laughs> nothing wrong against that. I personally have nothing against that at all, but I just, I'm not a musical guy. I have a nice voice, I just don't have a singing voice. Uh, but, yeah. But, hey, like I said, it doesn't matter your experience before because you're in a pond when you're in high school, but you're in a bigger lake when you get to college. And when you're outside of college or outside of where you learn how, learn the ropes, I don't know. If you learn the ropes, outside of where you learn the ropes is where you can become, uh, is where it's the big, big leagues. Uh, I've always heard people say, oh, but audition lines are like, 20, 30, like, you see, like, nightmarish uh, numbers. Like, you see dozens of people outside that door before you go into an audition. I'm going to say this to kind of always kind of help someone with limited, like, they have anxiety about that. Something that will help you out is just remember if you've got the training, you're better than probably 30% of those people. At least 30%. And let's say there are 20 people outside, 20 people that director is seeing for that one role you're auditioning for. And that's that's a high number uh, for a smaller production, which you should be aiming... I mean, you shouldn't just limit yourself, but you should also be realistic. You shouldn't just go out and try to audition to be the next Captain America or Iron Man or... Steve Jobs movie thing, whatever. I don't know why I brought up Steve Jobs, but my point is uh, a lot of those people are just there because they want to be famous. That's just it. Uh, some of them aren't taking the job seriously. 